Okay, so my screen is recording now. Um... All right, so in today's video, we're going to be looking at a whole other app. Um, and also, I've got this beautiful little notebook view. Um, maybe I'll improve on it later, but you can see it just kind of built some little Legos right here. Um, so this will just be like a little perspective down here so you can see whatever I'm writing. Today we're looking at uh, brokering rules managing job uh, application. So basically, the gist of this app is in an order management system, you have to create your rules about when you're brokering and at a time of day, how you want to broker your orders, right? And so it's like, oh, you want to try your next day shipping orders first at your warehouses and stores or just at your warehouses, then try them at your stores as well, and then try all of your orders at your warehouses, and then try all of your orders at warehouses and stores. That's like a whole sequence. So that's what that's like a sequence that you make right here. And you can do that multiple times a day at different and like different versions. And you can maybe even have some that are active and deactivated. So the core features that I want to work on today are there's right now there's no interface for actually creating a new flow that you would call. So basically like a new like brokering rule set. So add new brokering rule set. Hopefully this thing doesn't fall on me because I'm just, it's really close to my pen like that is an inch away right there. Not even, it's like a couple of centimeters away. So add, how do you add one? How do you remove it? Remove brokering rule set. Um, also, how do you like disable one? There's no way to like disable it right now. Um, additionally, what else is there that I might want to work on today? It's pretty much it. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with that. I think that's pretty much all. I'd like to just add these three things. It's probably going to be a pretty easy video, but still, we'll see. So... Uh, let's see, let's try to think about how we want to do this. So let's start with add for now and then we'll get into delete later. So what I'm thinking is at the top of this list right here, you can see uh, it's like a list, right? So basically when somebody loads up this application, here's what it looks like. So this whole section is hidden. One second. This section is hidden, and this is like in the center. So, like, uh, right, approximately like that, more or less, right? So, the question is let's say none of these exist. I'm going to return this to its normal state as well. So, let's do 1DP. Oops, we got to go to the surface and change this to 1. Or is it 1 or is it 2? It is one. Doesn't look the same, but sure. So this is not really a thing anymore. But yeah, so this is what your list looks like. So I guess the simplest thing to do here, let's replace this with an item. I'll use items often if I just want to put two pieces of information right next to each other or like up opposite each other. It's a pretty easy component to use for that. So let's put an item right here. Let's make sure it matches up width-wise. And let's not use an icon for now. So let's do none. And we'll say flows. Actually, you know what you could also do is like if you call this a list, you can just have basically what it would be is, where's my order screen in job manager this thing right here. So in a list header, there's actually a slot at the end uh, that you can use to add a button. So here, third time's a charm, is to actually use a list header and put this all in a list. That might be the move. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do list, not icon, do the component list. So not a list header, but a list divider gets me that. So I'm going to replace these items with cards. And I'm going to get rid of these for now. 
All right, so this, I am not entirely sure how this is gonna work. I think I'm gonna to wanna to detach this. Um, list header, list divider has a slot and I'm gonna end and, okay, so this is just nothing. I'm gonna replace this with a button. I'm gonna make this a small outline button. And I'm gonna make it the same button that's over there. So uh, let's make it icon add. Is it, oh, God damn it. Oh, it's like that, okay. I'm just gonna close this, I'm gonna keep messing it up. So not this one, but this one. And this is add. Yep. We can get rid of the stroke as well. Do I have an option for just nothing? Clear. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and these are our flows, all caps. So, for this, let's add some space between these. What's the space here? 24. Here we go. <laughs> Excuse me. So we're probably going to make this a little bit bigger. Or actually, at this point, we can just take this and put it in here. Take this, put it in here, get rid of these. Uh, for content, we're not going to want to clip content. Or else that kind of gets messed up. So there we go. Boom. So we're using a nice little ion list. We've got our flows, everything. Nice. I like that. I'm going to replace this with that too. So you can see when I kind of start with these designs, like the placement's kind of fast and loose. I'm not really too worried about exactly where I'm going to put stuff. It's more of kind of like just put it, see if it feels right, and then kind of go from there. So it seems like I've got this figured out. When you add something, you probably need a modal as well, right? So. Uh, let's start with the modal. I really need to make this a component because I just, I have to copy it every time I use it and I should really make this a component so I don't have to like, the exact, like this is the exact size of what a modal looks like in Ionic. And I don't want to like mess that up because it's like gives me the space I need to design in. But it's also like, just a thing. What do I need here? need a few input boxes so let's go input for now let's just randomly size them so that they're 20 eh, all right here we go 2020 good uh covid 2020 what let's go default let's say name I'm just gonna go with and do 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 do. Uh, what else do we need? Schedule. This could be a little confusing because in Job Manager, schedule is like the frequency at which you want to run it, and run time is when you want it to run. But for now, let's go with schedule. But I should probably change that to run time. Um, run. I'm just going to call it runtime for now. Screw it. And then frequency. See, I do have this, so this should be schedule. And so this would be a drop down here. Okay, so this needs to be. I, uh, let's call it select. 
So every now and then I will either choose to use the select component that I have pre-made or I'll use an eye on item and add select to the end because I forget that I have one of these made but it's good to remember. Uh, schedule every day runtime I'm going to call that. These are kind of bad placeholders but placeholders are always bad. There's never been a good placeholder. That's not true but I hate making placeholders so I'm saying that. This is also something I need to fix is the ones called lines full, ones called item border and it should just be called lines default or something. Okay, this is done. Let's add a fab here to save. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and get it from Job Manager. Yep, all right, there we go. Damn it. Damn it. Wow, I really thought it would paste perfectly in there. There we go. Not perfect, but we take what we can get. Add flow singular because we're adding one. Cool. So we've got that. We've got the whole process down for this. Um, so next is we need to be able to remove a flow from my schedule. So one option I should really change this to. I need to change this to the terminology terminology that I've used up above, but I'm lazy. I'm going to do that later. Okay. So the most simple way to deal with this is since this card isn't using any kind of layout, I'm just going to add uh, is it ellipses? Yeah. Boom, boom, right here. This is like the ultimate lazy way to deal with this is just put an overflow menu anywhere you don't want to deal with buttons and you click on it to get more options so that way it's scalable down the road. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the garbage bin of your UI where you can just kind of, or like the closet that you never clean. Yeah. That's how you do lazy design. Pro tips. Flow name. All right, so I probably don't need a few of these, so I'm just gonna get rid of these. And let's get rid of item border. So one is edit, and then one's gonna be delete. And I want both of these to have an icon. And let's make the edit like a pencil or something. Do I have something in Job Manager for this? I don't. Okay. Damn it. Okay, rules. Pencil. There we go. And delete is trash can always poor trash can never gets the love it deserves God damn. there we go that took a minute but we got there so we have a way to delete stuff now I think there should be an option to disable as well you know what we're going to do the next step in laziness, which is move this down. It means I don't feel like editing this popover. And we're going to go in here and add an option to toggle. And we're just going to say the user understands that this means on or off. Simple as that. That's what we call simple design, baby. 
All right, so let's just add this up above. So we're gonna, to some effect, maybe just make a separate container. There's no point in making like an I and item for this. But one approach to this could be to make this one I and item and then make this somehow like a flex container. But I think it's simpler to just have these be one thing and these be another thing and not worry about like trying to make this into I and items. Maybe it could be this is an item and this is two separate boxes, but we'll, we'll see. It's not like, I think, it's not straightforward to say the least, but we'll see. Because my priority number one is always to have really dumb, simple to, you, uh, to code UI. It should not be hard. It's how you, that's how you make fast app, like applications fast. So one thing that this is missing, actually, I completely forgot about this, is edit flow save button. There's no option to save, and if there's no save, you never know when to make an API call to your server to officially lock in the changes the user's made. So, for this, we could probably add something to like the header area of like, wherever this is, we probably make like a little section up top. It could be something like save, save changes. It's usually at the bottom. But let's go ahead and move this down for a second. Let's just play with this idea. This is one of the things where I feel like having a kit like this makes designing faster because otherwise what you'd be doing is going through your notebook, drawing this out, drawing, redrawing, stuff like that. But because all these components are all here so ready to go, it's basically like your notebook and you're not really investing heavily in creating finalized designs, but because creating them is so easy, it's just like... I feel like it's so much easier once you, you're used to the whole thing and you have it all mapped out in your head, like what components you have, stuff like that. I feel like this is just like the better way to do it. So, okay, here, uh, let's do outline. Let's leave it primary for now, but let's do save. Um, we're going to do constraints left and right, or just left and right, or let's do center for now. I don't know how that's going to help, but let's do center for now. Let's see what happens when I type now. Yeah, perfect. Save changes. Boom. I'd love to get like Figma's algorithm on this on like, how do you know not to move this and just to move this? Like if I do center, it's just going to move the smaller item, which is crazy to me because like if I move this over here, it's still going to do this. It's going to do both of them. So like what's the proximity on this? How does it know which one to move, which one not to move? Is there like a threshold on this? Like that's just like it's always like it's somehow it gets it. And I feel like that's really underrated. Um... Yeah, we got save changes. And I feel like this should probably change state. So I'm just going to make another version of this. It should probably become like a warning when you actually make changes. So that users know that you got to save your changes. Huh. I just had an idea. Another fancy way to do this could be to like put a fab button like right here in the center. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, so we've got remove, disable, we've covered all the bases honestly, this was kind of like a breeze. So when you expand this you get a list of like the parameters that the service can use. Um, I'm going to go in here and just kind of rechange uh, change this, so runtime frequency, I'm just going to get rid of this for now. A little bit of space, but get rid of this. So this, so this is the problem with using a select resting. You have to go in and undo it when you don't want it. 
Which, like, I don't know. You win some, you lose some. You can't have your cake and eat it. Um. So what is this? This is morning brokering, so let's call this. Uh, I don't know why it's called morning brokering if it runs at 2 p.m., but let's change it to 8 a.m. Okay, and this is every day. It's every day, bro. Okay. Here we go. Uh. Wait, so when you click edit, it's right here. So this should just be the edit screen. Why, why is there a separate edit thing right here? There shouldn't be. So I'm just gonna do, first of all, this is selected, so I just need to make this selected. Let's make this like 24. Um, also, there should just be something right here to change the name. So, one second. Let's move this over here, down, down, And this should just be name, flow name. And this is, this should be an input field. Let's move this to default. Flow name, what is it called? It's just called name. There we go. Ooh, that's not good. It added the shadow to literally everything. That's not what I wanted. I wanted it just on the thing that already had it. Boom. So, okay. Every day. Runtime. All right, we got that. So let's put this back up. So now if somebody wants to change the name, just click on this. They just come over here and do this. So I think we can just get rid of edit for now. I'm not going to get rid of this design just because it still lets me dump stuff in it later instead of putting a trash can button there. And the trash can button is not so important that it should be on every card no matter what. So this is what I did today. I don't know what that was. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually even good design, but it works for me. So I'm going to use it. And hopefully you learned something. Probably not, but you watched it. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Peace.